Paul said, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Neither count I my, my life dear. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, but that I may win Christ. Now, as Paul speaks like this, all his writings, when he's writing to the brethren, this is the way Paul talks. If you pay attention then to what Paul has written, what Paul has said, You'll come, away, you'll come away with the right perspective Amen. about living and life on this earth. That's for the saints of God. Now, we don't need necessarily this example, but God's given it to us anyway. This is a helper. He's going to get, we have their brethren to help us. Paul has come to the right conclusions concerning our pri- the priorities uh, of living in regard to the kingdom of God. How he's going to live. How he's going to live. And the mindset he had about his own body and the life that had been given to him. Uh, what he was going to do with it. See, God, uh, Paul had all these established these things and he had, you know, figured them out. And so um, everybody is supposed to press in and just get as close as you can to the Lord. Not just the Apostle Paul. Now, the Apostle Paul, he was a disciple, just like all of us are disciples. They follow. They follow. Disciples follow. And they get up close. Like uh, Brother Aaron said this morning, they get up close enough so they can, they can be a, 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 an eye learner. There you go. So you, you have to get up close for the Apostle Paul shows us how to do this. We come into this world, you see, with this life we've been given, and we live it. We live this life until we exit from this world. And uh, we literally use up the life we have, and we use it up day by day, every day, living in the world. We use up what we've been given. The world teaches us, now they got their perspective about this, the world teaches us that the highest attainment of a man's life in this world, well, it'll be measured by history, by how much he has given of himself to make this world a better place. They, they've got this view of living. and uh, <clears throat> But to think of ourselves as stewardships, this is really the proper thinking to have in the matter. To, to, to your life is a stewardship. Something we've been given and we are spending it in this world. Each and every day this resource and this stewardship is being used. And it will definitely, definitely, it will eventually be used up and depleted. A lot of young, a lot of young brethren haven't realized uh, hasn't dawned upon them, but in time you'll be more aware of how your body and how life you've been given is being consumed in the physical realm. Now the saints, okay, they have been committed to taking this time and the body we've been given, this life, and we're going to invest it in the world to come. That's our perspective. This is after, after all, this is what Paul was doing, wasn't it? So we, this is our perspective. The saints are committed to this. We want to realize that, yes, while we have this body and this life which has been given to us, uh, we, and it's being used up in this world, we, we wanted to know it is for uh, the promotion of the kingdom of God. And it's for the profit of Christ's body that I'm being used up. If it's for any other reason uh, than this, I just don't think we're going to get credit for it. Uh, in the end, if we've worn ourselves out for something different than for what Christ gave himself for, and if, if we've done something different than what Paul understood he should be doing, well, that's, that's going to be a rough place to be on the final day, I think. Jesus Christ laid down his life uh, for the Father. It says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Matter of fact, that's why he received that body. And it was the rejoicing of Paul that he could be used up in his flesh for the body of Christ. Yes. Colossians 1.24 So then we continue to extend ourselves and do what, we do what we got to do to manage life in this world, but at the same time, we work to that which the Lord has given us to do. It's, I'm reminded of Nehemiah in his day, why they, they worked on the wall with one hand, yes. they held the sword. Yes. They did it. Uh, at the end of the day, if you've spent yourself <coughs> for Christ, you've done well. Amen. And you can have the sense of this, brother. And at the end of your life, if you, and we do this day by day by day, and at the end of your life, 
If you've spent yourself for Jesus, you've done well and you can leave this world yes. with a sense of having done this. And with all the talking we do, with all the talking we do, we should never stray away from this primary point. Mm -hmm. Our focus should be right here on what I'm talking about. Yes. That, uh, Amen. that uh, we should, this should be our continuing main focus. We're all dying a little bit each day, but the joyous things is if you're doing it for an eternal gain. You see, that's what we want to talk about. Now, in view of this, what I just said, let me share with you what I think is uh, the most important task at hand, maybe one of the things. In regard to our dying to this world, I am, I am encouraged to consider the brethren and, their, and our, this perspective of the brethren living in this world that uh, we have been called to resist the enemy. Yes. Okay? That's, that's a... And, and our primary focus related to the dying in this world is to resist the enemy. We have not been called to hunt him down and to root him out and destroy him. Our good Lord has done this. He has come here personally and has done this. And he didn't have to hunt him down. He, he came to him. And so it's all word forward. Shout aloud, Hosanna. Like we, Christ is captain of the mighty throne. We are God's mighty throne. And how do we conquer in the name of the Lord? You see, and when we call to conquer in His name, you gird your armor on, stand firm, everyone, rest your cause upon His holy word. Yeah. Well, the people of God are conquerors. And when we do this, when we resist Satan, it's just, it's just, just that simple, really, brethren. We, we say no to this world. You consider Ananias and Sapphira, who with the rest of the infiltrators in the early church there, that assembled there, they were not living under Christ, but they were living under the world. The Spirit makes this known. And you remember after this incident with Ananias and Sapphira in, in Acts chapter 5, when the Spirit of the Lord struck them both dead. You remember this? Remember how great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things? Remember that? Yes. Now listen to what happened after that. The, the, the next four or five verses. And by the hand of the apostles were many signs of wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Now they could be with all they could all be in one accord, and the rest and the rest durst no man joined themselves to them, but the people magnified them, and the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, and so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least a shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities around about unto Jerusalem bringing them sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed every one. Now this was the immediate result of the cleansing of that congregation there. It was absolutely tremendous. A great testimony that God was with these brethren. Now, but then then, then, the high priest rose up, and all that were with them were with them. And they were filled with indignation, and they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. That's life with a capital L. Now, this is what I want to bring to your attention. The, the, the persistence of the apostles and the, and the uh, insistence of the apostles. They persisted and they were insistent on uh, standing up and speaking. Yes. It, was, it was key to bringing the heathen to accountability and it was also the means of strengthening and establishing the saints. The angel told them, go and stand and speak. Now, how about the persistence? And the uh, of the apostles and the resistance, they resisted. You see, that was my main point. Our, our, we are called to resist. The people of God must resist the devil, and we do this on a personal level, and and we do this by resisting the world and and the things that. But and and uh, and and we do it by continuing to stand and and to speak and 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 we're persistent and we insist. On, on these two and that. But at the same time, we're resisting the world and the devil. The apostles resisted the authorities that day. And they preached and ministered to the people in Jesus' name anyway. When they were exhorted to go and stand and speak, they did. And they resisted the efforts of men to quieten them. 
the apostles and all these brethren of the Lord, they were overcomers in this life because they said no. You see, they resisted. And anything that came up against them and their, in the kingdom of God, they said no to it. And they resisted, but, that, but they were insistent on Jesus Christ. And they were persistent in the kingdom of God. They said no to Satan, you see. And they said no to the world. And then God was able to use them in a mighty way, you see, because they had rejected and resisted. All we got to do is say no, you know. And uh, you can say no to Satan. Yeah. We, you can do this. And then we, we say no to the beckoning call of the world. We say no to that also. Resisting, that's our stance this morning for the saints. It's, it's, as we say no, uh, this is the way we overcome in every circumstance. We resist it. We, we overcome all the storms of circumstances by resisting that particular Temptation that's placed there in that circumstance. We all do this when we cast our we cast our anchor, our hope in the things of God. When the circumstances and and th those things that come and they rage over us and threaten us like a storm, a tempted storm, then we see we can we can cast saying no and resist, and that's casting our anchor over into the things of God. That's that's our hope, casting an anchor over into the unseen realm. Amen. You know, that's the purpose of an anchor, isn't it? Yeah. It's, to, it's to keep us from being carried away. Yeah. So you can see then that the, the, the real danger in not resisting and not being persistent and insistent is that if not, you're going to be carried away. Yeah. You know, the storm's intent is to carry us away. Right. The strong prevailing winds is to push us off course and to, and to deter us. We're told not, not to be carried away. And, and we do this when we cast our anchor. And we say no. We're told to stand. Sometimes we stand in the evil day. That's right in the middle of the storm. We hold fast and we stand fast. Yeah. All these things are expressing the same thing. Cast your anchor in the Lord Jesus. He is our great refuge. So I want to present this thought to you this morning. That resisting both to the... Both to the devil's uh, advances and to the and to the offerings of this world, or the actually offerings of Satan. This this is our fleeing to refuge. This is the same thing. This is this is having anchored ourselves in Christ Jesus. The analogy of a ship casting anchor, uh, it, it it eventually breaks down. You know, it doesn't. It can't carry it. The truth that's contained in it, it just can't carry it. It's uh, it can't depict the nature of faith fully. There's no time that we're really not anchored, you see. We don't ever, we're, we're not in the safe haven yet. So we can't, you know, but we're, and, and, and so we're always about with our anchor out. So that's, that's, that's faith. There's no time that hope is, is, is not anchored in, in Christ Jesus and not fully anchored in what God has promised us. So this morning, brother, I, I want to try to call you up higher and consider this this uh, this thing that uh, God has given us in faith, that we can actually take advantage of what Christ has done. We can we can say no to the offerings of Satan, and we can say no uh, to this world, and we can we can you know stand firm Amen. and resist yes. in this world. Amen. Let me uh, have a word of prayer. Mm -hmm.